Welcome back to part two in this series on building an application using Flutterflow and Superbase and we are building a goals tracking app in this series. This is part two. We are going to focus on the creation of the login page and the create user account page. We're going to get the UI pretty well much fleshed out, ready for us to start implementing Superbase in an upcoming video very, very soon. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so let's focus our attentions on building this particular screen. This is the login screen. So as you can see here, we've got this little lolly animation that just sits up here. It's a little target of a bullseye. And then we've got a piece of text here, which is kind of like the heading of our application. Um, this is kind of in its own kind of column. And then we've got another column down here, which contains a container, which contains some rows and all that kind of stuff in order to support our application. So let's build that now. So if inside the widget tree, I'm just going to choose the login page here. That's how we're going to start our application. And just down here in the widget tree, there's nothing there other than the page itself. So let's first add that particular container. So hit container. We've got that there. And on the right hand side, we're just going to choose these options here, which is going to make it kind of the full width and then the full height. So everything is now fully stretched to the to the right and to the bottom. And we're just going to choose this here where it says fill color, change the secondary background to the primary background that's kind of got that slight sort of subtle sort of gray look to our application now with inside our container we're going to focus on this bit here this this kind of lossy animation and this title so let's move here let's just make a change and let's hit the column option here so now we've got a kind of a column and then we're going to just with inside that column the first thing that we're going to do very simply is just type in lotty here type lotty animation and then we're just going to hit the little plus and then we're going to add a text in there as well so we just got that just below now with the lottie animations if you just select lottie animation we're going to choose the one that i've already loaded with inside the base project so on the animation source on the right hand side choose asset and then in the asset animation choose a chart target icon and then that's all that we need to do um, here. We're just going to move actually down to animation type. We want to just do this once. So we just want the animation just to play out once when the application loads up. Now our Lottie animation, we're just going to give it some uh, some padding from the top of say 30 here. So just make sure Lottie is selected, just choose 30. That just brings it down from the top. So we're just going to choose the text option there. And we're just going to give the text a name to my goals. And then with inside this particular option with the theme style unset, we're going to choose that. And we've already got a style with inside our application that we want to use. So just choose a text style heading and you'll see now that will make it much, much bigger and, and more in keeping with the design that we kind of see just over there. So with inside that, that should be everything that we need um, with inside that top column. We'll probably come back and make some minor adjustments very, very shortly. Um, just one thing to point out actually is that with inside the, whenever you apply one of the text, uh, sort of the widget styles, there seems to be this little niggle with inside a Flutterflow that seems to occur where you kind of get a conditional visibility that gets selected. So we don't want any conditional visibility. We always want this to be displayed with inside the UI. So um, it seems to be happening now, but of course at the time that you might be watching this video this might not occur but if it does just make sure that you just turn that off there it doesn't have any impact with inside the application but it's just you kind of see a little eye icon that just appears down here we don't really want to see that with inside our application so next up then within our column, let's hit column and let's add another container. So just choose container. And this time within our container, I'm actually gonna give the container a name. So just at the top right there, let's call this container and call it form container like that. Just hit a little tick there. So it's nice to give your widgets a good naming convention if you can. You don't need to do it across every single widget, but certainly when you are building out quite a complex UI, by giving names to your widgets will easily help you identify where they are actually in the widget tree when you sort of expand and collapse and all that kind of stuff. So just bear that one as a little tip there. So we've inside our form container, let's also hit the little plus here. Let's hit 
column and then within inside our column let's add a couple of other widgets in there as well so let's just put a couple in there we'll come back to those in just a second now we're inside the form container just select that and we've already got a style that we can apply to this particular widget already so with the form container being selected let's go up to where it says widget styling and choose container primary and what container primary will do that will just add some preset styles that we've created for a an actual container where we kind of got a little bit of a, a sort of a shadow a sort of round borders and all that kind of stuff really so again you can see those within inside the actual the theme widget section but that's what I've got selected at the moment so we just need to make some changes to the form container so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to give the width an infinite width so just going to move that out and then within inside the actual padding we're just going to choose 20 and then we're going to give 20 at the top and in fact let's do 20 on the right hand side as well so it just brings it in and then naturally what will happen now is as we start adding more and more widgets within inside that form container then the container will actually then extend in height so what we're now going to do is we've inside the um, the actual first column that we've got here we've got these couple of text widgets so let's sort those out first so within the text widget the first one that we're going to do is we're going to make a slight little change so within that one being selected let's move up to theme style so just choose that one and we're going to choose a, a text style heading so that will just make it a little bit larger and we do need to come in and we do need to kind of reduce the height of that so let's choose uh, say font size 24 there we don't want it to be too large um, everything else that we got there the, the color and everything is is looking pretty good um, and then what we now need to also do is we now need to just kind of work on the actual column padding as well this actually inside with with the column selected here this is the this is the column with which is inside the container we now need to give it some padding to bring everything off of the edge okay so up the top here let's just choose a 32 let's hit the little lock option and that will lock in the same across all of the respective uh, sort of the, the the top the bottom and, and the left and the right there okay so you can see everything in our has been bought off the edge so this next piece of text we now need to change so under the theme style here let's choose that and let's choose a text a style body that's just moved it actually we've got a bit of padding there this moved off the top there that's absolutely fine 16 at the top and 16 at the bottom what I'm going to do now let's just change this text in here so the first bit I'm going to type in is fill out the information below in order uh, to access your I say actually account there we go so that's all that we need to do and then in this top one here let's change that and let's change the title to welcome back so that's the first piece that we've got there and if you look now at the the sample that we got there that's very very similar to what we have got there so now let's move now down so this is the column as you remember here we've got the kind of the visibility uh, conditional vis visibility that's been set with the text on let's just quickly turn those off so we don't need those now next up what we're going to do with inside our column as you know with a column everything is is vertically stacked so with inside our column we're now going to add some text fields in because we're, we're going to want the user to actually now log into our application so move up to the little plus here let's do a search for text field there it is just at the bottom there text field just choose that there's one that's been added there let's just then right click and then let's just say duplicate so you can see here we've got two now let's now apply the style into both of those I could have done it on the first one and then of course duplicated it but I didn't quite do that then so let's just click on theme style here and we've got one called a single row so just choose that and then on the text field below we can also choose single row so there we go now we've got some padding that's been sort of applied here so with inside the text widgets we do want to actually turn that off let's turn that horrible conditional visibility that gets set off let's just take off the the 16 on the right there and let's do the same thing here as well let's turn off that conditional visibility let's just delete those out there as well so that's looking pretty good um this field here is actually going to be a password field okay so just with that selected let's just move down here just keep scrolling down here and you can see here there's actually a password field so let's just let's just select that that just means that it will kind of like you know hide any of the text that we actually put into that particular field 
So what I'm now going to do is I'm now just going to rename these particular fields. So with text field, the first one selected, let's just change the name up here to um, email address. And you'll see why this is important later, because when we actually reference these actual text fields with inside our actions, we can then reference them by their name. So email address will be quite obvious to us. And then of course, password will be as well. So with the next one selected, let's just choose text field. Let's move up here and let's give this one a name of password. Okay, that's all that we need to do there. So we need to just change this hint text here as well. So just with that selected, let's just move up here to the uh, the actual hint text here. I can find it. There it is. So it says some hint text. Let's just change that to enter your email address, something like that. And then with inside here, we can just do the same thing as well enter your password something along those lines that's good now with inside the column just choose the column again let's now add a button in because obviously you're going to want the user to actually log in that's going to be quite important so let's just hit the little plus here and let's just do a search for button there it is just choose button and uh, we have got some styles already set for a button across our application so just with it selected choose a theme style and choose button primary and of course we're going to probably just move our button off the top there so let's um just choose 16 there on the height that keeps things um, pretty in keeping with the, the rest of the, the spacing that we've got between those particular rows. And then where it actually, um, it, the, the actual title of the text, it, the button, sorry, is called button. We just want to change this to sign in like that. That's all that we need to do there. So that should be pretty good. Um, it looks like we've got a bit of a bit of a margin going on here. So let's actually just extend that out there so there we go so that's now in line with the actual uh, the actual form fields as well so that's looking pretty good so next up we're going to add another widget into our column so just choose the little plus there and we're going to do a search for a rich text just select that and then with inside the rich text widget we've got a rich text span that's going to be our first piece of content so that's going to say don't have an account so let's just select that and we're just going to say don't have an account like that with a question mark and put a couple of spaces in as well. And we're gonna now choose the next span in as well. So let's with that rich text selected, let's say add text. And then in here, we're gonna say sign up here like that. So that's perfect. Now with the rich text selected, let's just put another piece of padding in here of say 16. That just brings it down a little bit. And then within the font weight, let's just choose font uh, medium as a size. Makes things a little bit more bold on the top line there. And then what we're going to do on the first rich text span, we're just going to make sure we've got our font family selected as a themed font, fonts and primary family, which is Poppins is the font. And then we uh, just need to change the text color to be the secondary text, so choose secondary text, just makes that a sort of slightly grayed out look. And then within the second one, just choose rich text span. And with the font weight, we're gonna make this pretty strong of say 600 semi bold. And then on the text color, we are gonna choose the primary color there. So that's pretty well much our rich text set up there. And of course, when we come back onto the screen again, we'll then link that through to the creation of the account page once we get there. So that's this screen pretty well much created. Um, in fact, I've just seen here that we've got that um, that kind of visibility, that's um, the conditional visibility that's been added. So let's just make sure that is turned off there. So that's uh, that's pretty well much as we need. And of course, the Lottie animation is not going to display on this particular page at this moment in time because it's the first frame of the Lottie animation is completely empty. So you're not going to see anything. But of course, when we do run this up, you'll get that animation play out. So that's this particular login page screen created. Let's take the screen and then let's create the next screen which is going to be the create an account and um, we'll, we can duplicate this particular page and we can then create that so let's get ready to do that now okay so let's take the contents of our login page and let's copy it and move it across to our create an account page and then we'll make the changes so we've inside the actual container here of the login page just right click and just say uh, or literally click on the little copy option here and select that and then on the create account page just move over there and right click and then hit the little p there to paste it and we're going to get everything as we had it previously and we can now just make those adjustments that we actually need on this page
So let's move up to where it says welcome back. Let's just change the text there to get started like that. And then we can just change this piece of content here as well. OK, let's get started by filling out the form below. It's just a very simple piece of text here. Now, on the password field, we're going to duplicate this because we need to have a confirmation uh, box for our um, our password. So just hit the duplicate there. And then within here, we can just change the hint text here to confirm password password there we go and then um, with inside this and um, password field we're just going to move up to the top here we're just going to actually change where it says password we're just going to say uh, confirm and then uppercase p confirm password um i oh, just made a little typo there it's a confirm password there we go so i like to and um, with my fields funny enough it's just a programming habit but you'll notice there that um, i'm using kind of like a camel case I've got like, like a lowercase um kind of first letter and then i've got an uppercase letter um i seem to do that when i uh, when i'm actually applying it to my text fields so um please forgive me for that but it's just an old habit but pretty well much everything else i do there i kind of have like an uppercase letter for the actual widgets when i actually change names but that's just a, a personal thing but of course you can follow whatever convention that you would like we just need to change this button here now we're just going to uh, change this to the let's just find the, the actual sign in here and we're going to change this to create account quite simple and we just need to change the text across the bottom here as well so on the first rich text span let's just change this to say um already um got an account so like that for question mark and then where it says sign up here we just need to change that so just choose rich text band there and let's change that to login here like that that's all that we need to do so that's looking pretty good that's looking good um so i think that is how easy it is to with inside follow flow is to take something you've already got you did you copy it crane you you got a new page you paste it on there and you pretty well much got the foundations of everything that you 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 need in order for that page to to work I hey, hope you enjoyed that particular video. We've just started our journey on creating our goals application. We've got the two first screens created. Of course, they don't do anything at this moment, but in the next video, we're going to connect our application up to Superbase and get that authentication underway. So um, please, as always, do like the video. Of course, really do appreciate that. And please, of course, subscribe to the channel as well. So until the next video, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.